Hi everybody, uh, it's been a long day, so I'll try to finish this as quickly as possible. But it's fitting that it's my presentation is sort of the last one out here because I'm going to be talking about a completely new mode of transportation. So this is railway reforms and government's um, conclave, but what I'm going to be talking about is something called the Hyperloop. Now, I founded and I lead a, a non-profit academic think tank consisting of students and faculty uh, called Hyperloop India, and this is based across the top engineering and uh, management institutions of the country. And essentially what we are dealing with is a fifth mode of transport. So the last transport revolution we had was 100 years ago when the right, when, when you had airplanes. And uh, after that we've had cars, we've had trains, we have ships and we've had planes. Uh, so what's next in, 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 the transport, in the transport industry? So transport has always driven uh, humans forward, human civilization forward. What is next? So in 2013, uh, SpaceX and Tesla CEO, uh, Elon Musk, he proposed something called the Hyperloop, which is essentially, uh, and he released a white paper in 2013. And since then, a few groups around the world have taken it upon themselves to develop a fifth mode of transport. Now, the, the Hyperloop is often confused as the fa faster form of railways. Essentially, it's very dif different from what our current systems have. So it's essentially a combination of the convenience of a car, the speed of a train, and the, capac uh, the speed of a plane, and the capacity of a train. So, it's actually, so, so the first question that people ask is, okay, what, what is the Hyperloop? Where, where can I buy a Hyperloop? But that, that's, so let's, let's quickly answer the question, what is a Hyperloop? Uh, so, the current scenario of transport as it exists right now, it's sort of a linear relation, it's a proportional relation between energy and velocity. So the more, the more velocity you want to achieve, the more energy you need to, uh, you need to invest. So at, at, at one corner you see rockets which need a lot of energy. And in another corner you have ships which have less velocity but need, don't need that much energy. Uh, there's a huge zone of opportunity uh, somewhere in, the, in that corner. And the Hyperloop sort of, the essential philosophy of the Hyperloop is to um, sort of make full use of that zone of opportunity, where you can actually apply less amounts of energy and uh, attain higher amounts of velocity. Now, how does the Hyperloop do that? Um, the first, the first thing that to imagine, to imagine the Hyperloop is sort of like a broadband for transport. What, what the fiber optic cable did for, um, the in, the, for, for information, doing that for passengers and for freight is what the essential end goal of the Hyperloop is. So how do you do that? You, start, you first start with a pod. Now a pod is not a train, so it's not a set of bogies which are linked to each other. A pod is an individualistic entity, a packetized entity just like a data packet in fiber optics. Uh, so you start with a pod that can be designed to transport both freight and passengers. Uh, this is just not, this is unlike high-speed rail, for instance, which is just for passengers. So you, you can have actually containers inside a pod-like system. So if you can see the image out there, it can actually house a whole container, but it can also house a cabin. And pods operate within tubes, which creates a controlled environment. Um, inside the tubes, you levitate the pods using magnetic levitation instead of using wheels to eliminate friction. And then you reduce the air pressure inside the tubes to eliminate almost all air resistance. And the fundamental pro problem with transport, which sort of prevents it from reaching full potential, is that there are fundamentally two things. One is air friction, and one is contact friction. Uh, planes, planes travel at around 30,000 feet because the air resistance is very low out there. But what if you could suck out most of the air out of the tube, so you have almost, almost zero air resistance. You can actually reach speeds of up to 1,200 kilometers per hour. Uh, by, amount, by applying very, very few bursts of energy. The system can glide for around 60 kilometers per hour with small, small bursts of energy application throughout the distance. So it's essentially going to be a vacuum, semi-vacuum tube system with pods operating inside the system, and it's going to be completely autonomous. Um, the essential benefits of the Hyperloop would be it's, it's much safer because it will be constructed at, uh, above grade or below grade, so, uh, which eliminates most of the accidents that you usually have with railways. It'll be more convenient, so it'll be completely on-demand and direct-to-destination systems, like Uber. It'll be much cheaper than uh, other, other systems like the high-speed rail, because uh, right, now, right now it's at a technology readiness level of around three to four. So be because you have negligible aerodynamic drag and magnetic drag, which means higher energy efficiency, uh, faster speeds and cheaper cost, and also less intrusive civil infra uh, infrastructure. Um, um, hence, it's, it's going to be much cheaper. So also, also, it's completely uh, electric, so it's going to be sustainable and um, will replace other fossil fuel mobility options in the future. Um, it's also flexible, uh, so it, it, makes you, it makes last mile and first mile solutions uh, uh, 
which facilitates last mile and first mile solutions, and I'd love to discuss these in more detail during the lunch session. And it's also non-disruptive. Uh, now, we all have heard a lot about the Hyperloop. Uh, I'm, I'm basically out here to see what Hyperloop holds for India. Uh, now, the government of India announced the Mission 350 Plus program uh, earlier last year, the, the Ministry of Railways, which is essentially the most ambitious step by the Ministry of Railways till date. And what this aims to do is to, it aims to augment the, the capacity of the railways by introducing maglev systems on a PPP basis. And this, this is sort of a sign of a new, new phase of development in the Indian railways is to uh, sort, of, uh, sort of replace the sort of legacy colonial infrastructure that we have over the last 60 or 70 years here and make, make tremendous leapfrogs in transport infrastructure. Uh, India has numerous uh, transport problems. You have limited planning and investment. Our transport services are very expensive. Uh, uh, we are the world's largest growing economy and our transport infrastructure isn't meant to deal uh, with, with that. Uh, and we have unreliable transport services which are prone to supply chain risks. And we can always make in incremental improvements as, um, as was discussed earlier, but we believe that there have to be efforts in order to uh, drastically leapfrog transport infrastructure, and that's, that's what we're trying to do here at Hyperloop India. Uh, as I said before, this is the right time because the Mission 350 Plus initiative is sort of spearheaded towards bringing maglev systems into, into the country. And we're working with uh, Rail India Transport Economic Services Rights and other stakeholders in network like Hyperloop One, which is one of our sponsors, to, uh, to see how the Hyperloop can fit in best within India's regulations, India's um, initiatives, in, uh, India's go governance reforms. Uh, so who we are. So, so before, before I uh, go on forward, we're a bunch of, um, I, I, am, I am an undergraduate student from Bits Pilani. And my, my whole team is considered of students and faculty from Bitspilani Indian School of Business, IIM Ahmedabad, and National Institute of Design. And we've been advised by bodies like Rights, Invest India, Startup India, and, uh, port, uh, uh, um, and companies like DP World. And the reason we are able to work on um, something like the Hyperloop is because as students, as the next generation of engineers, next generation of uh, transport planners, we, we, are, we are able to uh, do things which, are, which, which uh, would, would be uh, typically risky in more entrenched organizations. So that's why we've been able to make a lot of progress with talking to, uh, talking to governance bodies, talking to different stakeholders, with what the Hyperloop could hold. Now what essentially we are planning to do, uh, and we are a multidisciplinary, multi-campus body, uh, which is constituted of people from different skill sets like electronics, magnetic levitation, manufacturing, government policy, feasibility, engineering, design. Uh, now, what our goals is, the, so, so uh, on, on the outset, this sounds like a very, very big, huge plan, but we sort of divide it into a few chunks. Uh, 